Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a virus in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by CGShortcuts.Courses, our online training platform where you can take your motion graphic skills to the next level. We've got an ever-growing range of courses in the same straight-to-the-point, easy-to-follow format of our YouTube videos. Each course also comes with loads of project files and downloadable assets, as well as support directly from the course instructor. Our YouTube subscribers get 5% off all courses with the code YouTube5, so check it out today. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so to create our virus, we're going to start with a sphere. So let's come up here and bring one of those guys in. And the plan is to have a bunch of tendrils coming off this sphere. So because we're going to be deforming it, we want to start off with some evenly spaced geometry. So let's see what our polygons look like. We'll come up here to the display and switch the lines on. And you can see we've got some nice even geometry around here, but not so nice at the top and bottom where we've got these poles. So if we come over to the object tab and down here where we've got the different types of sphere that we can use, let's change this. And we want to pick something with nice even topology. So you could use the hexahedron, which gives you something like that. And you can see those polys are nice and evenly spaced. But for this example, we're actually going to use the icosahedron, which gives us these nice even triangles. And now we're actually going to use a plugin to turn these triangles into hexagons. So with our sphere selected, we'll come up to extensions and we're going to use the dual graph plugin by Merck. And I'll put a link in the description below to where you can get that plugin. So we'll hold Alt on the keyboard when we bring this in so it's automatically applied to our selected sphere. And that's given us some really nice evenly spaced out geometry that we can go ahead and extrude these tendrils out of. But before we do that, we need to turn this into a single mesh. So we'll come up to our dual graph and right click and we'll select current state to object. And let's merge that effect into a single polygon mesh, this one right here. So we can hide this and we'll just save it for later. And with our new mesh selected, we wanna come down here and select all of these faces. So we'll switch over to our polygon selection mode here and we'll just hit Control A on the keyboard to select all of the polygons. Then we'll right click and choose Extrude Inner. And that's going to allow us to offset some of these hexagons. So when we extrude our tentacles out, they won't be so close together. But we want all of our hexagons to extrude individually. So we just need to untick the preserve groups over here. And now if we click and drag, we get that offset in every one of those hexagons. And now we want to use these same faces to create our tendrils. So we want to store our polygon selection here so we can use it in an effector. So while it's still selected there, we'll come up to the select menu and we'll set a selection. And that's created a polygon selection tag right here. And we'll use that to extrude just these faces. And the way we're going to do that is with our mesh selected, we'll come over here to the MoGraph menu and we'll bring in a Mo extrude. When we click this, we wanna hold shift so it's automatically applied to our mesh. And you can see that's become a child and it's also extruding our entire mesh. But we wanna limit this effect to just our selection. So if we take a look at our Mo extrude under the object tab, we can add a polygon selection right here. So let's grab this tag and drag that into this. And now we're just extruding those hexagons we selected. And we want these tendrils to be a bit longer than this. So we need to go over here to the transform tab. And you can see we've already got a value in the Z direction here. So that's the one we need to adjust. So let's bring that up to about 50 centimeters. And that's finally starting to look a bit more virus shaped. So we probably don't need so many segments in here. So we'll go back to the object tab and the segments in the Mo extrude are called extrusion steps. So let's bring that down to three, which does make our tendrils a bit smaller, but I think I can live with that. So the next thing we wanna do is make this look a bit more organic and smooth everything out. But before we do, we might as well just rename our dual graph to something like virus. And if you're wondering why we can't see our extrusion anymore, that's just because we're set to polygon mode. But if we switch to object mode, that should come back. All right, so let's smooth our virus. We'll grab that guy and we'll come over here and we'll bring in a subdivision surface. 
And if we hold Alt, it'll automatically apply itself to the top of the hierarchy. And our virus and extrusion is now a lot smoother. And you can probably see that a bit better if we switch those lines off. And I think that's looking a bit more virusy. You could leave it there if you wanted to, but we're going to refine the shape of these tendrils a bit more. And because we've used a Mo extrude, you'll notice that we also have the option to add an effector to this. So let's do exactly that. With our Mo extrude selected, we'll come up to the MoGraph menu and we'll go to effectors and we'll bring in a step effector. And as soon as we bring that in, we've already started changing the profile of our tendrils here. And if we go and take a look at the effector tab of our step effector, you can see that's being controlled by this spline here, which we can easily edit. If we were to hold control and click onto here, we can add another point. And it's just a matter of repositioning these to create the profile of our tendril. So if we want those little knobbly bits on the end, we can go with a spline like this, and we can also adjust this with the minimum value here. We can make that profile a bit more extreme by bringing this down here. And that's pretty much how I created my virus shape, but you can have a play around with that and see what you can come up with. So the next step is animating this guy. So let's tidy this up first. We'll grab our subdivision surface and hit Alt G on the keyboard to put it in a group. And we'll just rename this guy to something like animation. And we're going to animate this with a tag. So if we come up here and go to animation tags, we'll bring in a vibrate tag. And inside that tag, we want to add some random motion to our position and to our rotation. And we'll hit play to see what that gives us. And it's not looking great. So I've already done a bit of trial and error on here and I found that the best settings for this is 30 centimeters in all of the amplitudes. So the X, Y, and Z, and also in the rotation, which gives us a nice range of motion but it's all happening a bit fast. So we'll bring down the frequency in the position and the rotation, we'll just go with one. And that, if we play it back, gives us a fairly organic looking animation. And we could probably give ourselves a few more frames in here as well. Let's make this 200 and we'll just stretch this out and we'll play that. And if you're happy with your virus at this point, you could just stop it here, but we're gonna make this look a little bit more interesting and add some dynamic effects to our tendrils. So let's come back over here and pop this open and we'll click back on our virus. We want these tendrils to sway along with the animation. So we're going to use a deformer for that. So we'll come up here and grab a jiggle deformer. And we wanna hold shift while we bring this in. So it becomes a child of our virus and goes right in here in the hierarchy. Although we want it to affect this after the Mo extrude. So let's just grab this guy and move that down here. So now let's go and see what effect that has on it so far. And that might be a bit hard to see, but it is actually jiggling and undulating in there. But we actually want this effect to only affect the tendrils and not the body or the entire object as a whole. So to do this, we just need to go to our jiggle deformer and we'll bring in some fall off under the fall off tab. And so our jiggle is not affecting the center of this, we're going to use a spherical fall off, which you can find right here. And when we bring that in, it might be a little bit hard to see because our sphere, this guy right here, is a little bit tiny. So we'll scale that up with the scale tool. And this area in the middle here is where our jiggle is fully affecting this and the area from that circle to this circle is our fall off. So it gradually stops affecting it as we go out this way. Let's just scale up that sphere and we'll see what that looks like. Exactly what we thought. The area in the center is being affected fully and then we fall off into the tendrils where nothing is being affected. But basically we just wanna invert this so we can get our swaying tendrils. And that's pretty easy to do. If we go back to our spherical fall off and over to the remapping tab, you can see this is how our fall off is being mapped. And all we need to do is invert this. And now if we hit play, you can see our fall off has been reversed and we're only affecting our tendrils now. So now if we pause that, we can go back to our jiggle deformer and over to the object tab we can start to refine our jiggle effect. So if we hit play, 
we'll start by tweaking the stiffness. If we bring this down, you can see we get this kind of effect where our mesh is a bit more loose. Then we could bring the structural down so our tendrils can bend a bit more. And if we wanted our virus to look like it's inside the human body or something, we can add a bit of drag to increase the air resistance as if it was in liquid, something like that. So play around with these settings and see what you can come up with. I think I'm pretty happy with this look, so I'll we'll stop that there. And one final thing I wanna do before we wrap this up is smooth out these sections in between the tendrils. So with our virus mesh selected, we'll come back up to deformers and this time we'll bring in a smoothing deformer. So again, we'll hold shift when we bring that in so it's applied into our hierarchy. And that's ended up over here, but we actually want it affecting our mesh after the jiggle. So let's just move this to the bottom here. And that actually gives us a pretty cool look as soon as we do that. So if you wanted to go for a more spiky looking virus, you can definitely run with this. But let's just stop that and rewind here. We're gonna go with our knobbly looking virus. So we need to initialize our smoothing deformer on the first frame so we can tweak these. And we don't wanna smooth this out too much, so let's bring the strength down. And we'll just bring this up to the point where we're happy about the middle section. Then we could probably bring the stiffness down as well. And like we did before, I just want the smoothing to affect the center part only. So we can go back over here and use a fall off as well. I think we'll just use a spherical fall off again. Then we'll make sure we've got that guy selected and we'll come over here and scale that up. And as we do, you can see the areas that are being affected right in the center there. So we'll just make sure our fall off is covering the entire center, something like that. Then we'll go and give that a play. And now we have our dancing virus. But before we finish up, let's just stop that and we'll hide both of our fall off fields here. Before you start rendering this, you'll just wanna go back to the subdivision surface and bring this up a tad. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And as with all of our tutorials, if you wanna get your hands on the full render ready project files, which include all the final lighting, materials, and Octane render settings, you can get them from our Patreon page. Big shout out to this month's patrons for supporting the channel and allowing us to keep making tutorials. You guys are the best. And that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you could leave a like or a dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.